welcome to our celebration of worship on the Lord's Day. It is the day that God has made, and we're here to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Greg Cheslock. I want to welcome you all to 4th Avenue United Methodist Church. If you're our guest this morning, we sincerely pray that this celebration of worship lifts you on your spiritual journey and that you feel a warm welcome among us. It's good to be back after a couple of years, a couple of years. <laughs> I don't, know what the, I don't know what that's all about, but uh, I, I had the opportunity to be in my home congregation last Sunday and the Sunday before uh, that, that, that Aldersgate Church in Chelmsford, Massachusetts that nurtured my faith and, and never ceases to lift my spirits to be in that uh, congregation where my um, father and my two sisters still uh, belong. So thank you for your prayers for me during the time that I was away. We had a wonderful celebration of my dad's 80th birthday two Saturdays, Saturdays ago. And, and I also had lots of opportunities to connect with some old friends during the time that I was away. So thank you for your prayers. We have a couple of, of, of short, enthusiastic announcements. I'm going to call in Chris Schiffer to give the first one. So a short, enthusiastic announcement that we'll be meeting uh, right after the service, although please do go uh, and get yourself some uh, coffee and treats. Um, but for those who are interested in potentially helping with a fall soup luncheon, uh, we're going to be considering uh, putting one of those on. We don't have a date or, or a menu or things like that, so part of today's meeting might be to discuss that sort of thing. Um, this is uh, just in terms of looking at the budget. Um, it looked like it was a good time uh, to have an opportunity for another fundraiser uh, to do things like help meet our apportionments. Um, so we will be meeting uh, probably around 10.15, so take some time, get yourself some coffee, get a treat, and uh, we'll be meeting in the library. Great. Thank you, Chris. And just, I'm trying to remember when it is, February 6th and 7th is uh, an upcoming event called Faribault Praise. I trust that you've been reading about it in the newsletter and in the bulletin. Um, what it is, is we are, we among several other Christian communities in Faribault are gathering together to offer prayer and offer blessing over the entirety of the city. This is the second year in which this has been done, and remarkably last year, having covered the city with prayer, the following week was the tornado that happened in, in, uh, in our community, and no lives were lost, and the damage was minimized in many respects, and neighbors helped neighbors to clean up. It was a remarkable thing. Uh, many of us believe that the prayer, uh, the fruit of the prayer, was uh, some of those results. So, um, I'm going to call on you in just a moment, okay? Over here, you'll see the uh, sign for Faribault Praise, that, that uh, lime green sign over there. Isn't that heck of a color? And um, on the table is a sign-up sheet. And you can sign up for a, um, an hour or a two-hour block in which uh, the idea is that you would go around a particular area of the city which we are assigned, and you would offer prayers for those who are living in those areas and, for, um, and there's a prayer guide for that. You don't have to go around. You can do it at home. You can do it with others somewhere else. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can be in prayer for our community. And then we get to host the gathering, the prayer uh, worship gathering at 3 o'clock on Saturday of, that day, of, that, uh, of those two days. So that's the 6th, Friday, the 6th at 3, beginning at 3, to Friday or Saturday at 3, gathering here for prayer and praise. Kelly has a word. No, I just wanted to say it's September. So, did I say October? No, you said yeah. February. February. <laughs> well, I've been gone for a few years, so that's not as far away as you think it is. Do take a moment to sign the registration pads where you are sitting uh, so that we can celebrate those who are worshiping with us. It is indeed good to be in the house of the Lord on this the Lord's day. Let us prepare our hearts now to worship God. The candles are lit to remind us that the light of Jesus Christ shines on us. Yeah. <laughs>
Let us stand and sing our praises to God. God, we confess that we are sinners, that we are in need of your grace and your mercy. How often, Lord, we let fear paralyze us. How often we wallow in self-pity. Sometimes we expect too much of others and too little of ourselves. We settle for what is convenient over what we know is right. Lord, forgive us. Have mercy on us. 
Free us from guilt and transform us by your grace. Strengthen our faith and deepen our hope and lead us to everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are freed and forgiven. Thanks be to God. And all God's people rejoice, saying, Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Old Testament from the book of Jeremiah. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign God, I said, I can't speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, Don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against the nations and kingdoms. Some, <clears throat> some of you must uproot, uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Here is the reading of the first lesson. Our song of the day is entitled, Be the Center. If you'd follow my lead, we'll sing together this, this song. Oh. 
Let us now stand for the reading of the gospel. A reading from the gospel of Luke. Jesus said, so don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven have no holes in them. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it, and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart and your thoughts will be also. Be dressed for service and well prepared, as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. There will be special favor for those who are ready and waiting for his return. I tell you, he himself will seek them, put on an apron, and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, there will be special favor for his servants who are ready. Know this, a homeowner who knew exactly when a burglar was coming would not permit the house to be broken into. You must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come as I share some moments with them. <coughs> excited about school starting in a couple of weeks. You probably enjoyed enjoy the freedom of uh, summertime and soon school will begin. I came across an incredible story this week that I wanted to tell you. It's about a, a boy named Blake. And Blake lives in Georgia. And Blake's had a really tough time in school in the past. He's been a victim of bullying. You ever heard of bullying? Do you know bullying when you see it? Yeah, it's an ugly thing, isn't, isn't it? Where people, people are treated badly, they're ignored, or ugly things are said to them, or, or uh, everybody stays away from them. That's an awful, awful thing. And you can imagine that this causes Jesus a great deal of pain to watch children being mistreated. Well, Blake's mother did something remarkable. She, she began a little business in which she did personalized t-shirts. And so she came to her son and she said, Blake, I'm, I'm willing to make you any kind of t-shirt you want. It can have a, a baseball theme or a football theme or a basketball theme or, or some musical theme or whatever theme you want it to be, I'll make it for you. Well, Blake thought about it for a moment and he decided that he wanted his shirt to demonstrate a powerful message. If you look on the screen right here, I'm going to show you the picture of, this is Blake right here, and you see what it says on his shirt? What does it say? I will be your friend. This is the message that Blake wanted to give on the first day of school. He wanted to indicate to other students that they could count on him. They could count on him to be uh, their friend. And this is especially a powerful message to those who are kind of forgotten about and are, are the victims of bullying. And you know, that's just a great way to think about what our calling is as God's people. We want to be the kind of people who care for people, who love people, who notice people, and who are always kind toward people. So I want you, maybe you won't have a, a, a shirt like that, but you can carry with you an attitude like that, of a readiness and a willingness to be a friend 
to whoever needs one. And if we'll do that, Jesus will smile upon us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we are your friends, made a part of your family by Jesus Christ, by his great love for us. And Lord, you call us to befriend those who are lonely, who are lost, who are left out, and those who are in the corner, and those who are uh, mistreated. Help us, Lord, to carry in our spirits this willingness to be a friend of whoever needs one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for sharing these moments with me this morning. A number of years ago, there was a cell phone company that had a very powerful and memorable commercial, perhaps you remember it. It struck fear in the heart of any employee that goofed off at work or thought about goofing off at work. The boss is away on vacation. You see him on a sandy beach wearing a Hawaiian shirt. He's got a a drink in his hand with a little umbrella, and he's got a cell phone in his hand, and he's calling back to the office. Meanwhile, back at the office, things are not business as usual. The employees have taken away, taken full advantage of the boss's absence and are enjoying a vacation of their own. Paper airplanes are flying through the air, and the elevator music has been replaced with music that you could really dance to. And people are dancing on their desks until the phone rings. The secretary tries to quiet down the office so that she can listen to and, and hear the voice of the person who has called, and she finds out it's the boss on the other line. He says, my vacation has been cut short. I'm at the end of the block, and I'll be there in about five minutes. You can imagine the scene. There is bedlam in the office. There's panic. Everybody is scrambling all over the place, trying to dress things up appropriately. But the boss is still in his lounge chair back at the beach, having a good laugh, just imagining the chaos that his call has caused in the office. The boss, back without warning, what will we be caught doing? What will we be caught leaving undone? The early church lived with this very real tension. The followers of Jesus had lived through his final days. They had remembered his teaching, and they heard, they heard him say that he would return again. They lived their lives in anticipation of the arrival of that great and glorious moment. And when it didn't happen in their own lifetime, the gospel writers wanted to make sure that you and I, who are the inheritors of the gospel, would come to know the same story, the same promise of Jesus' return. And that we would be called to live our lives with an eye fixed on Jesus and not caught off guard when he returns. Jesus is coming at any time, the day or hour, no one knows. He may very well be at the end of the block, so to speak. 2,000 years later, you and I struggle to capture that sense of urgency in living the gospel. Yet the message of the Bible is the same. Jesus is coming. Get ready and stay ready. Don't become complacent. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. Don't become distracted. Keep your eye on Jesus and continuously serve him. More than perhaps ever before, the world needs people of faith who live with this deep sense of urgency, 
Those who watch continuously, those who care consistently, those who lead, and those who serve. Like those on a night watch, as Christians, we need to remain strong in our faith in Jesus Christ and devoted to our mission as disciples. And what is that mission? That mission is to continuously be growing in our love of God and our neighbor. That mission is for us to continuously be reach, reaching out and reaching new people with the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. That mission is also to be the hands and feet of Jesus and join him in healing this broken world. This is our mission. This is our calling. This is what we're supposed to always be about. And we need to be careful that we don't let distractions enter into our view. We don't fall into a deep sense of fatigue or depression or, or let other priorities fall, fall into our lives and keep us from the, the main thing being the main thing. We must make the fulfillment of what our Master Jesus has called us to do our highest aim our primary concern. And what does that mean? It means that you and I are called to live in a consistently moral way, making sure that our desires are in line with God's will and God's way. And when we recognize that our desires are out of sync with God and we fall short of, of we fall into temptation or we travel down a, a not so helpful bumpy road, then we come back to God as quickly as we can. We confess our sin, we seek God's mercy, and we pray for God's cleansing and transforming work to happen for us. And we know that God always honors such a prayer. And daily we are called to turn to God, to follow him, seeking to remain obedient to our master. That is, our ears are always peeled to listen for God speaking to us even as we meditate on what he has said in his word, because he never contradicts what he says in his word. So all of that meditation on scripture, along with the Holy Spirit's work, and our ears peeled to listen for God's speaking, helps us to stay obedient to his will and his way. Always readying ourselves to give an account for our lives. The exact time of the bridegroom's return is not is unknown. He may come on anyone's watch. And blessed are the servants who get ready and stay ready. True worship leads to hearty service. What we are doing together is very, very important. So is turning to the Word of God every day and meditating on Scripture. Our engagement with Scripture is what we call a means of grace, an important way in which the grace of God begins to transform our lives and continues to keep us on God's way. Our life of prayer is so vitally important. We tap into the very power and presence of God. We seek God's will, and God speaks to our hearts and, and fills us with His grace through prayer. And our engagement with the word here at church, our fellowship with one another, our, our receiving of Holy Communion, all of these are ways in which we are fully engaged in the devotion and worship of God. But that worship and devotion is, a, is to lead us into offering our lives in Christian service. Jesus says, be dressed for service and well prepared as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. There will be special favor, think grace, there will be special favor for those who are ready and waiting for his return. God wants our hearts through our devotional life, paired with our engagement in serving Christ and acting in his name. Sometimes we hear well-intentioned uh, criticisms of Christians who are so deeply into the devotional life but fail to be of any earthly good in this world. That's a real temptation, temptation that we need to avoid. 
We are called to be people in action, living out our faith in real ways, filling our days with acts of service that will make a difference in the world. So let me ask you a couple of questions about the way that you lived out your faith last week. Where did you experience God last week? How did you live out your faith last week? What difference did you make in the life of another last week? Whose life did you touch? How did you respond to the people that God put in your path who were in need? Maybe that's a way that we can we can stir up that faith in ourselves by asking these questions about how we're encountering God and how we are God's hands and feet in a given week. John Wesley wrote these incredible words. Why don't you read them with me? Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Wow. I think that really captures it. It really captures what you and I are called to do, those of us who have an eye toward Jesus, a longing for his return. This is the way that we live our lives. This, these words indicate to us that we always want to be ready, willing, and able to stand in and jump in and be an instrument of God in serving, in serving others. When Jesus proclaimed his inaugural sermon in the Nazareth synagogue, he said, let's read it together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Those are powerful words words that we could begin each day with. We could say, as Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Each one of us could say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and announce that the time has come when God would save his people. That would be our mission statement as we enter into, the day, into our days. Every day we could remember that the Spirit of the Lord is not just upon pastors, not just upon Christian leaders, but upon every single one of us who name the name of Jesus Christ. Any of you remember playing kick the can as a kid? It's a kind of a hide and seek sort of game where there's a can in the middle and the person who is it counts from 20 down to zero and everybody else hides and usually you play at the time when the sun is just about going down. Everybody hides and the, and the it moves around and looks for those who have hidden. The it would say, I see Mark behind the car and Mark has to go to the patio to, where he's in jail now. Come out, Paul, I see you in the shadow of that evergreen tree. And he has to go to the patio jail as well. And everybody has to stay out until someone, someone finds a way to get to that can and kicks the can and everybody is freed from the jail. That's a picture of what our calling is as well. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to proclaim and fulfill Jesus' words. We are to be bold, we are to act, we are to work to free others, especially those who cannot free themselves. We are to step out of our comfort zones and walk with those who are lonely and lost, stumbling in the darkness, those who are ensnared in the grip of sin, those who disbelieve the wonderful truths of God. So I ask you this morning, are you willing to make room in your busy schedules to meet the needs of those who are struggling? Will you dare to work through your natural anxiety? Will you call upon the Holy Spirit to make that phone call that you need to make with that person you've lost touch with? 
Will you make the extra effort to connect with a neighbor in your, in your neighborhood that you haven't seen for a while? Or the new neighbor that's just moved in? Or the person that, by the grapevine, you've heard is going through a difficult time? How might you and I work for the freedom and full flourishing of those who are stuck? That's our calling as the people of faith. There is much work to be done in our world. There are wrongs to be righted. There are relationships to be mended. There are people to be fed. There are bridges to be built, hurts to be healed, lonely to be befriended, lives to be rescued in the name of Jesus Christ. Today's gospel is a wake-up call. Jesus is coming. We know not when but he could be just around the corner. Let us not be caught off guard or goofing off and letting our faith wither and die. Rather, let us let our lights shine before others. Let us engage ourselves completely in freeing others who cannot free themselves. Let us always be ready to bear witness to the love of Christ in word and deed. Jesus indeed is coming. Great is the reward for those who get ready and stay ready. Let us pray. Lord, you've called us to live with a sense of urgency. We don't have all the time in the world. Every day you send us out on assignment. Every day the Spirit of the Lord is upon us to bring good news and to release captives and set free oppressed people. So bring us out of our comfort zones, O oh Lord. Bring us out of our complacency. Set fire to our faith again. Help us to dare to risk moving out of our comfort zones and joining you in this great, awesome, and adventurous and joy-filled work. And may our living bring you praise and advance Christ's work. In his name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
remain standing now and let us unite our voices to offer this historic confession of the Christian Church. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray together. O oh God, our God, we praise and magnify your name. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. With you all things are possible. We know that you are with us and for us, and your plans are for our good, for a future and a hope. Break through into our lives and into our church. Stir up afresh our faith. Set our hearts aflame with the fire of your love. <coughs> Open our eyes to new, fresh possibilities and fill us anew with the power of your spirit. Usher us into a new season of faithfulness and fruitfulness for your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear our prayers, O God. Touch with your healing grace those who are ill in mind and body and spirit. Deliver those struggling with addiction. Give encouragement to those who are depressed. Sustain those caring for a loved one in declining health or facing surgeries. Send companionship to those who are lonely Give direction to those who are floundering. Comfort all who grieve. Walk closely with those who journey through life's darkest valley. May they know peace in believing and the hope of everlasting life. Lord Jesus Christ, we prepare our hearts for your coming. Listen to the prayers of your faithful people gathered here. Fill us with hope. Inspire us in faith. Ever engage us in service and witness to your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people say, Amen. Now let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The ushers wait upon us for this morning's offering.
receive our tithes and offerings, our faith and our very lives. Help us ever to be alert and ready for your coming, always seeking to know you and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And with our hands joined one to another, we offer the words our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Today it's closer than it was yesterday. 
And our assignment is always the same, to continuously be growing in our love of God and our neighbors, reaching people with the good news of salvation, and, using, and joining God in bringing hope and healing to a broken world. Let's get after it this week. Let's go after it with greater intensity, greater sense of urgency. The Lord's coming to us. Let us go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen.